Hello, welcome to the Friday, September 13th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. Yesterday I talked quite a bit about DNS over HTTPS and about the possibility that you can use the use application DNS.net domain to block the automatic use of DNS over HTTPS. Well, today we got a quick diary from Xavier how to configure bind to serve up the respective NX domain records. So take a look at it if you want to block DNS over HTTPS. And yes, this will only block the automatic use of this protocol, will not block the intentional use of the protocol. And since I'm spending time in Europe right now, I figured I should probably pick up a Europe topic. And one issue that has come up this week and is sort of uh, being important this weekend is something called the Payment Services Directive 2. What it essentially states is that starting on Saturdays, all banks have to require two-factor authentication for any login. It also sort of affects online shopping somewhat, but some of that impact was actually delayed because online stores just were not ready for it. So far, banks in Europe did use two-factor authentication, but usually only to perform transactions, not to just log in and, for example, check your account balance. And since all the banks were kind of late implementing it, they essentially rolled out necessary changes to their websites today or tomorrow. And of course, the new requirement to use two-factor authentication did cause quite a bit of confusion among customers, which now is also used by scammers. One scam currently making the rounds is going after various banks and it's essentially claiming that because of this new directive that customers have to re-verify their information and then they usually just ask them to log into a phishing site or ask them for PII via email. This is sort of a typical case of where actually added security just causes confusion and confusion usually never really ends up to be something good for security at all. In addition, these new login requirements did cause a very large call volume to various customer service lines, which are now also overloaded. And of course, a customer who is questioning an email that, for example, tells them that their account got locked and they now have to unlock it by providing credentials to a somewhat shady site. Well, they can't really call their bank and verify this particular request. So they're more likely going to fall for the phishing email. And of course, if you do receive any phishing emails like this, then please send them my way. And then we got a couple of router vulnerabilities again to talk about. In this case, a problem with D-Link and Comba Telecom routers. The D-Link vulnerability is pretty straightforward. It's affecting the DSL 2875AL and the wireless AC7050 ADSL 2 plus modems and router combinations. Now here the ROM file.cfg is accessible to anybody with access to the web admin interface. So you don't need to authenticate. And this file does contain the username and password that the router uses to connect to the DSL provider. Of course, often with DSL setups, the router sort of has to log in with the ISP. So an attacker would obtain the credentials for the user's account with the ISP. The second issue in the Comba Telecom routers is also a password disclosure, very similar in that a configuration file can be downloaded without authentication. And in this case, the configuration file does include an MD5 hash password. Of course, MD5 hash tends to be brute forced pretty easily. 
Also, sadly, yet another case of how not to deal with vulnerability reports from these companies. Combat Telecom didn't respond at all, even though Trustwave tried to reach out to them several times. D-Link, uh, they did respond. They did release a new firmware version now that should fix uh, these problems. But again, a lot of confusion about the timeline here as well. And is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.